So now in this final video on nutrition, what we're going to be focusing on is the regulation of two other components that are associated with the consumption and appetites that we have. So we'll entitle the next flowchart, Appetite and Consumption Regulation. So these are two processes that are regulated by hormones. But before we get into the specific hormones associated with the regulation, let's take a look at some general ideas and terms associated with both appetite and consumption. First and foremost, there's this idea of overnutrition that we need to understand. And it's very simple. When somebody is undergoing overnutrition or is suffering from overnutrition, which is certainly possible, they are consuming more calories, kilocalories, capital C, than needed. Because remember, we stated that nutrition is all about getting the right amount and type of food. So we have to make sure that the amount is necessary. But if you overdo it, if you consume more calories than needed, this can certainly lead to overnutrition, which can further lead to obesity. So it can lead to obesity. Okay, so that's overnutrition if you're overdoing this process. Now, in order for this to be regulated, your appetite and the amount you consume, you're going to utilize the effect of different feedback circuits. Like much of regulation and much of homeostasis, many different feedback circuits are going to be in control of many different processes. Specifically here, feedback circuits will control fat storage, it will control fat storage and also fat metabolism, so plus metabolism. Whether or not you're breaking down and using fats or whether or not you're storing fats. This is all in an attempt to maintain homeostasis. So you will have some breakdown and some build up. Sometimes you will consume, sometimes you will break down, etc. All of this is based off of the feedback that the brain receives. Now, speaking of the brain, let's take a look at the nervous system and its role in this idea of appetite and consumption regulation, because it has a major role. The nervous system has many different networks of neurons, so we'll just label this as neuron networks. These are throughout the body. They're found within the musculoskeletal system, they're found within the circulatory system, but specifically right now, if we focus on the digestive system, the neuron networks of that system, they're responsible for the following. They will relay and also integrate information that's coming from the digestive system, DS for digestive system, in an attempt to regulate, because the brain is in charge of much of the regulation in the body, to regulate the secretion of different hormones, which we'll get to in just a second. And these are specifically going to be dietary hormones that are of focus. So the neuron networks throughout the digestive system will send information back to the brain, and the brain will integrate that information within the specific, let's say, digestive centers to figure out, hey, maybe I need to consume something, or maybe I do not need to consume something. That's all going to be covered um, and directly relayed to the part of the brain known as its satiety center. So the brain's satiety satiety, some people call it like that, center. This is basically the brain's fullness center. This is going to be the target of many hormones that are going to be relayed to the brain. And these hormones will send messages to the brain's sat satiety center. And this is where we're going to have the following. The big idea here is that this generates, whenever you get messages sent here, this generates nerve impulses messages will be relayed of either this feeling of fullness, that means that you're satiated, you're full in other words, or feelings of hunger, quite the opposite. So these are both feelings, okay? And these feelings are a result of nerve impulses being generated by this part of the brain in order to tell you, to make you feel whether or not you're full, stop eating, or whether or not you're not full, whether or not you need to eat, 
of whether or not you're experiencing hunger. These are perceived by the brain and perceived by you as either being full or being hungry. Now, this is not going to just happen on its own. It needs to utilize a regulatory mechanism, and that regulatory mechanism will all be grounded upon hormonal regulation of both appetite and consumption. So let's take a look at the hormones involved in this. The way I'm going to present these hormones, there's four of them, is in chronological order. How you feel these hormones or how these hormones act as in a response to, let's say, you're in a hungry state. So let's say you're hungry. The first hormone that's going to be activated is called ghrelin. G-H-E-R-L-I-N. Ghrelin. This is the first hormone. That's the one over here. Where this is going to come from is the stomach wall. So it's originally secreted from the digestive system, right? Like we stated over here in the neuron network section. From the stomach wall. So we'll write that down. And once it's secreted from the stomach wall, this is going to go to the brain, this center in the brain, and it's going to initiate a feeling of hunger. And the brain will feel hungry, and thus the body will feel hungry. Okay, so now you're going to go out and eat something. Good. What's the next hormone that's going to respond to, let's say, a meal? The next hormone is insulin. This is one that we've covered in great detail. But insulin, let's say, uh, very broadly, it will be produced directly after a meal, and this makes sense, okay? Then this is because it's produced after a meal because the blood glucose levels right now are high. You have broken down glucose, you have absorbed glucose into the blood, and now it's floating around within the blood because you've just eaten food, and food contains tons of glucose, so now insulin will be produced. What is insulin's job? Its job is to, of course, tell blood glucose to be put into cells, yes, but it also has a secondary job where it actually acts on the satiety center of the brain, the satiety center, however you say it. It acts on that part of the brain because it tells that brain, that part of the brain, that you are no longer hungry. It suppresses hunger, in other words. Blocks hunger, that feeling of hunger. And if you block the feeling of hunger, you are typically experiencing the feeling of fullness. Suppressing hunger or feeling fullness, same thing, all caused by insulin reaching that part of the brain. Now this is again after the meal, after you have consumed as a result of feeling hungry originally by ghrelin. Next up in terms of the next hormone to respond to this food is PYY. PYY is a hormone that's going to be secreted by the small intestine. Here it is again. We have the digestive system relaying information to the nervous system secreted by the small intestine after meals. So you have eaten something, the small intestine will also start absorbing a lot, breaking down a lot, and therefore it will send a message to the brain, hey, I'm doing this a lot, so my message to you is that you are going to suppress the appetite. This is going to serve as an appetite suppressant. That's just another way of stating that it's going to give you a feeling of fullness, much like insulin does to the brain as well. So we have fullness in two and three. And then finally, in number four, the last hormone in this cascade is going to be leptin. These are all separate, but they act individually, yes, but overall they're going to give you the feelings of appetite and whether or not you need to consume something. Leptin, as the fourth and final hormone, is going to be a hormone produced not directly by the digestive system, actually. It's actually produced by adipose tissue. And if you remember, when you're storing high-energy molecules, you store them originally as glycogen, but let's say glycogen gets full, you store high-energy molecules as fat within fat cells known as adipose cells, and a bunch of fat cells will give you adipose tissue. This is just fat tissue. So fat tissue within you is not just sitting there. It's not just sitting there and storing fat. Yes, it's doing that, but it also is actively making leptin and producing leptin. What does this cause? Leptin, once it's produced, provides a feeling of satiation in the brain, aka a feeling of fullness. Fullness is also known as satiation. In addition, what we notice is that if you decrease, if somebody has decreased levels of leptin, that directly means that the, if the levels of leptin are decreased, this means that 
the body fat itself, the body fat levels have decreased. Body fat levels decreased. That means that the body needs to eat. There's not enough fat within the body, and therefore that will increase the appetite. If you decrease the body fat, you decrease leptin, you decrease satiation, you get an increase in appetite. You want to eat more. So leptin has that sort of dual role so long as it's in a, either a high level or a low level, depending on the state and what you ate. So overall, that concludes our look at nutrition. It goes hand in hand with digestion. Hopefully you've gained a greater appreciation for all these different events that are occurring after you eat that nice and delicious meal, both on the process side of how it gets processed and broken down and the response to that breaking down.